Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and I have found a really cute free pattern from Riley Blake with these cherries and hearts on them. Now it's a really cute quilt but I want to turn this quilt into a table runner. So not all of the directions are going to work for me but I do have a very simple way of turning this pattern using all of the directions inside into a table runner and it doesn't involve a lot of math. So here's what the quilt pattern looks like. I'm sorry it's not in color, but my printer decided it did not want to print any color this morning. So here is the quilt, and I want to turn this quilt into a table runner. So we know most of the directions are going to work, but the amount of fabric is not going to work, and some of the cutting directions are not going to work. So the first thing I want to do is draw out my blocks. Patterns have the directions, how much fabric, and a lot of times they will have the piece numbered. So I will take the information from these sheets and transfer them to another sheet. So let me show you what I've done for that heart. I've taken the heart and I've drawn that pattern on another piece of paper. Now this is not to size, it's just giving me a layout. I've colored in what's going to be my red or my pink, and I've just left my background fabric neutral. So I know that shape because of the pattern. And a lot of times you can get it right from that front page. I will then go in and follow the directions and letter my pattern. So it's telling me A and B, so I'm numbering or lettering these A and B. I have C, I have D. So I go through and just from the illustrations, I mark up this page. From there, I go to my cutting directions. I look up B and find out what B is. And it's telling me four and a half inch squares. Now, of course, I'm not cutting all of the fabric, but I do need the size. So in this case, the B started at a four and a half inch square. So I have both my B's four and a half inches. My A's, I marked the size. All of them, I did mark the size of the cutting size. And while I was there, I did put the arrows for my pressing. And I've done the same thing for my cherries. This again is not to size. The size is not important. I just want to have the letters and the size of cutting. These corners are one and a half inch squares. So that's the size I'm cutting. This long strip is a two and a half inch square. That's what I'm cutting. My J is a two inch square. Again, that's what I'm cutting. These are cutting sizes. And while I was there, the arrows are just going to help me go along. Once I have this all drafted up, I go in and I read this pattern and follow along. It's as if I'm pretending that I'm going to be sewing these. So it starts with that heart block and I'm going to read as I go along. As I'm reading, I make sure that all of this is correct. So in my mind, I am making those blocks and following along. And that makes sure that I do have all of this correct. Now I will take and cut my fabric according to my picture. How many hearts am I going to make? I'm going to make two. So I'm just going to cut my fabric and stack it along until I have two full blocks sitting together. Let me show you what I mean. I am starting with this bundle of fat quarters from Riley Blake. Now, of course, I'm not going to need them all, but it does give me some pinks for the hearts, some red and some green and I have some background fabric. So I'm going to be using this and I'm just going to cut as I go along until I have enough pieces. This is a great way of using up your scraps. So here's my pattern. I'm going to start with my two four and a half inch squares, but I'm making two blocks. So I have that, my eight and a half by two and a half, two blocks, and those four and a half by two and a half. So I make sure that I have all of my pinks, 
And then I'll add my background fabric. I'm going to need A. I'll put it down in the corner. And I need two of each because I am making two blocks. That's going to go in that corner. So in the top, I'm going to need two, 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 and two. So now I know that I have two complete blocks cut out. For the cherry blocks, I am making three. So I have my four and a half, four and a half, everything is going to be in threes. So I'm going to lay out my main fabric and then add my background fabrics, all in piles of three. I've just laid them out on a piece of stretch canvas that I picked up at the craft store. And I have a pile of these that I use all the time. The table runner will have sashing, but I'm going to do the sashing after I put those blocks together. So from here, I'm going to be able to put my five blocks together. And I am using a stitch and flip method, just like the pattern says. The sizes and the directions are going to be the same. The only difference was the amount of fabric and the amount of blocks to be made. So I'm going to go in and follow these directions and make my five blocks. When they're talking about a stitch and a flip, what they're referring to is you're going to take the one piece of fabric, and it's usually a square, you're going to draw a line from corner to corner and you're going to stitch along that line. And then you're going to flip. So you've stitched and flip. So you're going to be able to trim off this little point leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. So when you put that little point back, the size did not change. You just replaced a corner. And in this case, for these stems, you're stitching and flipping twice. So we have done the one. And then over top of that piece, you're going to add another square. Draw the line, stitch, and flip. Then you're going to be able to trim off this little point. And when you trim that off, you're going to have this little stem. So I'm going to just make sure that my stems are going in the right direction. And you can see when those are going to go together, how they're going to make that block. So all of these blocks are in this stitch and flip method. Once we've done all the stitching, flipping, and have trimmed off our edges, we're going to be able to put the blocks together. And this is the same for the cherry as it is for the heart. When you're doing the points to the hearts, the background fabric is a different size than that pink. So when we match them together, the little extra background fabric is going to hang along the bottom. So this is the larger size, which is five inches, and this is the four and a half inch. Draw those lines, and when you stitch them, you're going to have that point, and now we can sew the heart together. So I have my hearts and my cherries now done, and I'm going to need to add some sashing in between. So I'm going to lay out my blocks, and because I'm going to make it as a table runner, I'm going to switch up the design so it's going to look good from both sides. And it will be most noticeable with those cherries. The sashing in between is an inch and a half by nine inches. So I'm going to be able to sew that sashing between those five blocks. And I'm also going to add a piece of sashing on the end of those two blocks. When all the blocks are together, the sashing is on, and we'll need to add a small border to match the sashing at an inch and a half. And that really is going to finish that off nicely. Now my measurements came to 46 and a half inches for this top and bottom long strip, but be sure to check yours to see if it works. Now that this is all done, I'm going to add on that four and a half inch border. And for this border, I would recommend measuring all of your sides and cutting the borders to fit your measurements. With that border done, the table runner is still the same size along that top, which is 54 inches. The only difference is I didn't do the length. So in my case, my table runner is now 19 inches. By switching those cherries and hearts, I'll be able to see this runner 
from both sides. So it won't matter what side you're sitting at, you're going to be looking at it and it'll be nice to see. So if I drawing out the blocks and putting the measurements, putting the numbers, letters, any information that we need really helps for any quilt. But especially when you're taking that large quilt and chopping it so you just have one row. Because the measurements are going to be the same, but the fabric is definitely going to be different. So this is sort of a at a glance pattern for me. I'll put a link in the description to the free pattern. And as always, thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. I do have a newsletter, all under So Very Easy. Bye for now.